Hi all, I have a very interesting game to show you today, another interesting game of Mikhail Tal. Now, you may remember he dominated the 1959 candidates tournament, especially he crushed Fisher four times, but there was one player, Paul Keres, who Tal had a little bit more trouble with. Let's have a look at this particular game. E4 from Paul Keres, this is in round 17. Tal played the Sicilian defense, we get actually the can variation, K-A-N, and it's with an early bishop d3 here, five bishop d3. Knight c6, white's intention is to take on c6 now. And Tau actually captures away from the center, that has certain perks to it, more control of d4, and the dark squares in general. Okay, we have white castling. E5, so looking again at marking some key dark squares here. The bishops are both liberated. It seems as though black's got a good position fundamentally. Knight D2, we have queen C7. A4, now knight F6, queen F3. Whilst black might be playing on the dark squares, white is wanting to play on the light squares here because this e5, potentially, if white can get rid of this guy, f5 could be weak. Uh, and in fact, in this position, quite often knight c4 is played, by the way, knight c4. And this, this move order is has been seen quite a bit. But uh, anyway, let's go with the game queen f3. We still get knight c4 in, in any case slightly different move order but here instead of bishop g5 as we just seen Paul cares plays knight e3 now rook e8 bishop c4 and Tao actually doesn't mind the exchange of light square bishops he plays bishop e6 he doesn't fear what seems to be on the surface quite an aggressive knight potentially coming to f5 but uh, if he leaves this bishop on c4, if he left it, it's uh, kind of annoying. Maybe white is up to some, you know, some potential attacking intentions with this pressure on f7. Maybe even consider things like g4, g5 later with preparation. But uh, yeah, Tal parries the bishop, but at the expense of the f5 square. Rook takes, we have knight f5. So how good is this knight? Tal tries to just kick it. G6. We have check. And this is actually kind of useful. Although the knight is on the rim here, it's on F7. And after this move, it's a little bit on the dangerous side. Rook D1 is played. Tal now plays an incredibly bold move in some respects. With this latent pressure on f7, it's the queen guarding f7, but Tal is interested in dark square count counterplay. He plays rook d8. White now takes the queen away from f7 by taking on d8. And you'll notice now after bishop g5, this looks a little bit awkward. Hold on a sec. There's a pin. The knight can't move anyway because of f7. Pin two ways, in fact. But. So here plays queen d4, pressurizing e4 and also b2. So unpinning. But of course, taking on the knight is impossible. We have, because of queen takes f7, we have actually the move h4. Saying to Tal, do you really want to take on b2? And also, by the way, if he takes with the queen, bishop takes f6. Let's have a look at that just for a moment. Bishop takes f6 would win the queen. So, okay, h4 is, is looking like an interesting uh, attacking move. It protects the bishop, but hold on a sec. What was the threat? If we look at c3, in fact, black was threatening something. Can you see a nifty tactic for black, which is probably why h4 was chosen? What can black play here if I give you five seconds? 
Okay, queen takes f2. And then we can have a nice fork here. Yes, that's very pleasant for black. So h4 is kind of just trying to protect the bishop, really. I mean, it's making space for the king, but it's letting b2 go. So is it too dangerous to take this pawn on b2, though? Already, Tal has let Paul Keres install attacking pieces around his king. And is he really going to take this pawn on b2? Well, he does. And now rook d1. And it seems as though white's really generating some dangerous threats. I mean, rook d8, for example, then even queen f6 would be on for rook g8. Just to put that on the board, well, Tal played bishop d4, stopping that entry. But if he doesn't, let's just give a token move to show this. Rook d8 would be absolutely slaughter time here with the bishop, knight, and queen conspiring. For example, b6, queen takes f6, and rook g8 would be checkmate. So yeah, this next move, bishop d4, a necessary defensive move, it seems. But things get very exciting now. These three pieces around the king, surely they mean something here. And this looks like a very, very... Um, dangerous position. So after bishop d4, we have actually rook d3. And now one key idea with rook d3 is to play c3 to this lodged bishop to again get rook d8. What does Tal do here? It's starting to look incredibly dangerous. It really is. Tau actually just took on c2, which seemingly allows now a very, very strong looking move based on f7. If you were white, what would you consider playing this position based on f7? It just looks as though this could be a wipeout. So I'll give you five seconds here, white play. Okay. Rook takes d4, yeah, he's trying to play for e5. E takes d4, and this doesn't this look crushing? If rook takes, we take the, you know, queen takes f6. If the knight moves, queen takes f7. This is where the game takes a very strange, intriguing turn. What does Tao do here to try and defend himself? Incredible. Hasn't he been a bit greedy on the queen side? If I give you five seconds, what do you think Tal played here? Okay, he plays king f8, getting the king out of the danger zone a bit and encouraging white to block that f file so that this knight is not so relevant. If knight d7, yeah, then just f7 falls as mentioned. And say d3, e takes f6 is actually rather crushing here because here queen g3 is a killer move for queen b8. For example, king e8, queen c7, it's all over. But Tao's move has got perfect timing to it by playing king f8 here, and he's able to address in slow motion. The idea of e takes f6 and queen g3 for entering with the queen. Because now, after e takes, he stops any queen g3 with this next move. Queen c3, stopping any notion of queen g3. And also note, if queen f4, then there's a check here and, and queen e5. Let's put that on the board for a moment. Check queen e5. And we've got lots of potential passed pawns here to compensate for being a piece down. White tries queen g4. We have check. And now grabbing another pawn. Yes, this is a little bit as though Tao's queen has been carnivorous in this game, wanting to eat a lot of pawns. Queen h3, queen e1, queen b3, attacking b7, that's protected. A takes, C takes, 
check but now b4 queen b3 check 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 is it going to be a repetition no queen d6 protecting b4 and now this past pawn is pushed d3 this knight seems a bit out of play actually it's here that this past pawn can be safely pushed black's king is fairly safe in this position queen d1 is played queen c5 check and now queen c2 dragging this pawn down seems inevitable now queen f3 we have d2 not fearing any check here because there's always things like rook e8 or rather there's just rook e8 <laughs> it's pretty dangerous with this fawn pawn here but this is okay bishop takes d2 is played on move 40 and after queen takes d2 paul carers resigned but to be fair you know what happens in the other three games paul Carras won the other three games yeah he dominated Mikhail Tal in this event and it's worth I think we're going to have to check out some of those other three games they're classic encounters but uh what happened in this tournament basically was that Mikhail Tal was able to decimate the lower rated players not the lower rated basically the other players at the tournament including Fisher the FIDE rating system started in 1970 by the way so there weren't even there wasn't even video ratings at this time but uh yeah tell did very well against everyone else but not so well against paul carez uh so tell ended up winning the tournament despite being beaten up by paul Carres three to one but this was the game that tell actually won it's an intriguing game a, a tense battle and it looks as though tell was playing in a slightly different provocative materialistic style here with his queen snatching these pawns on the queen side and very very good king safety considerations just in time i would say just in time defense here of the black king against the numerous threats building up very interesting game i hope you think so too comments questions likes appreciated thanks very much